want to like try to like be very particular on the agents you do want to work with instead of like you know going through some things where you're like oh you know i buy anything yeah right? now they're gonna send you fucking everything under the sun because that's how they get paid right so i i'm very like strict on the criteria that of course. i'm looking for yeah, that makes sense. and they have to essentially run numbers on some stuff and i teach them on how to do mm. that too and go hey is there spread inside of here or is there no spread i'm gonna lose my ass mm, okay. so that's kind of how i share with them like what i'm looking for just by simply running comps in the area and go okay this house sold for three hundred fifty thousand dollars like last week and this one is selling for 250 mm. and it's the same house right basically yeah. well i want to buy that two hundred fifty thousand dollar house because if i go th- throw 50 into it hopefully i can get like 30 or 40 right. out of it right you know next question is the deal that you did this year or yeah. the flip how many deals did you have to look at to find that one deal uh probably on about <laughs> hundred I, I would say over a hundred over a hundred deals yeah i, I would love say that, over a hundred especially the market has been super saturated so i probably looked close to like i'd say 250 300 deals to be part of oh my gosh yeah 250 so, deals before you yeah. find one deal. So not, I, mean, I like that i agree yeah. with you not all these deals i went in person either though Right. Yeah. On the one, so basically how I do it is that it's my underwriting process. So what I'll do is I'll look at it because especially with technology today, I can look at all the photos, I can run some comps real fast, and then I'll run all of the numbers basically on my PL statement mm-hmm. that I have. And if it meets my criteria, I'll go out to the property and go see it. Mm. If it doesn't meet my criteria, I'm not gonna waste my time driving out there, I'm not gonna waste anyone else's time. Yeah. I'm just gonna pass and not and just move on to the next one. So you have to run a lot of numbers on all these deals before, you know, because then it also I have to put in so many offers too before one of those offers gets accepted. Mm. There's plenty of other houses before that first one I put in offers in, they just didn't get accepted, you know? And if if you want that P&L sheet, Kyle sells it. They do sell it, yeah. (laughs) So if you want that sheet that Kyle, the master uh, P&L sheet, the master uh, buying criteria sheet, then uh, go to the book, call again with Kyle. Yeah, 100%, yeah. So... Um, the reason why I did that because so many people were asking me about it because yeah. I actually built that myself because I was looking at so many deals and I would just work out the math on like a note sheet Yes. and it just takes so much more time instead I was like fuck it like I'm going to build out something I'm a big systems guy Yes. Uh, so built out a system to basically underwrite deals within five minutes and that helped me out dramatically to mm-hmm. do that to see do I have one or am I wasting my time right so I wanted to bring Kyle on here man it's an entrepreneur through and through from 16 years old to putting signs out yeah and learning from you know people that he saw that wanted to be like and so that's why like I said these are honest conversations with entrepreneurs you know when I was 16 years old personally I wasn't doing that you know I didn't realize this whole train of you can actually make your dreams a reality until I turned 18 years old yeah. my first sales job was wholesaling that was my first oh, sales yeah, job. I remember you telling me about yeah that. my yeah. first sales job was wholesaling and stuff and so once I got into that because I knew I wanted to do real estate because I remember that for, and this is going back to what yeah. I said earlier going up to successful people I did that with 10 people I remember I counted 10 cars 10 people that got out they looked happy they looked you know florent ab- abundant they had their families their wife maybe their significant other or their children with them and I just went up to them and I was like, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> and I was polite, respectful, and told them my name, value, characteristics after they asked me. And then one person gave me a job in wholesaling. Really? Yeah, that's how I got my first wholesaling. What, what type of car was he driving? You know, my um, he was driving a Porsche. It was in 2000 I and I don't know, a few years ago. Um, however that So it was a nice Porsche and you Beautiful saw this guy Porsche. and you're like, dude, I want to drive a Porsche. Like, Brand yeah. new, <laughs> detailed, just got out of yeah. the car. And went up to him, like I said, and yeah, he uh, introduced me, got into wholesaling, and that was my first job. That's how I took off in my career in sales, dude. But so you know the grind, then it's a it's a freaking grind yeah. to make those calls, like especially if that's what you're doing when you first get started. Mm-hmm. Where a lot of people start door knocking, doing cold calls, or you know, hopefully you're lucky and you have someone that's giving you some warm leads that are coming from like you know, a website or something like right. that. I got wholesale for six months, um, and all I did was cold call. I never did any yep. rocking. Um, should have done that. But I also had three other jobs at the time, or two. Okay. Actually, I should say two other jobs because that was my third. And going to school full time, and I was fat, overweight, and had to lose weight. Too, so <laughs> definitely know the grind, man. Woke up plenty of times at three thirty in the morning myself to go into eleven p.m. and then wake up the next day to go to the gym and do the go game. Again. Yeah. Um, so again, you know, Kyle is an honest person. You can see it through and through in his heart. Um, a lot of people feel the same way in our circle. Again, that's why I wanted to bring him on here. He's someone that, if he's not at seven figures already, which he's probably very close in the amount of deals that he's done, he's bought and looked at and wholesaled in terms of value, millions of dollars in real estate. Um, so I can say confidently that by the time that he's maybe even 30 years old, right, that he's gonna be where he wants to be. And that's my next and last and, and, last and final question is, what do you see for your life? What's the vision for you? 
Um, who do you want to impact and like what are the goals? Yeah, so one of my biggest goals, and this has been a goal for a while of mine, uh, is a billion dollars under assets under management. Uh, a billion dollars, yeah. dude. Yeah, so I want to eventually start moving into some more multifamily stuff, especially after I did my first fourplex. Mm -hmm. uh, it just showed me that like this the scale that you can go and how much more that you can do that, especially with holding on to some yes. of these properties. Uh, because a lot of people, you know, the fix and flip game is cool, but it's like as soon as I sell that property, cool, well, I gotta go move that money into the next one and the next one and the next one. So it's a great way to build up capital, but it's not a great way to build wealth, if that makes that sense. That makes complete sense. So me. what I wanna do is essentially start building up more capital from the wholesaling business to throw into rentals, apartments, and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's like musical chairs? Um, yes. Flipping, yeah. right? Because <laughs> you, you never know when it's gonna stop, right? Yeah. You never know when the music is gonna end and you've got three properties you know, that you own and then no one's buying them, right? That's what we saw yeah. in 2008. So apartment complexes, right? I love yeah. that. Yeah. But four units, that's the cutoff. As, yeah. I mean, you know, but in listeners too, where it turns from residential to commercial. And with four units like you have, you were able to do, well, really the seller financing deal, and you can do that still with five units or more. 100%. But yeah. for the people listening, you can right now do four units with a motivated seller, someone that's retired. There's deals in your city right now. They're everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you door knock to find them, whether you work for a company to find them, whether you yeah. put out signs in the beginning to go find them, but there's deals right now where you can put down zero to three percent on a four unit, six hundred and fifty thousand dollar property. Yeah. But I love real estate, and I always to ask people because they ask me, "Well, what do you want to do, stocks or real estate?" When I say this question or this statement is, when you buy a hundred thousand dollars in stocks, how much stock do you get? You get a hundred thousand dollars. When you buy yeah. <laughs> when you buy, you know, when you take a hundred thousand dollars and you put it into real estate, you can potentially buy four hundred thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> or more if yeah. you can, you know, if you do it right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's huge, right? You can the, the leverage part, and um, so again, if you're just starting out, like I said, Kyle is someone that knows real estate. Get in a circle, surround yourself with successful people. What content are you watching every day? Are you watching content that literally puts you step behind? Um, there's even content that puts you lateral, right? Whether that's, I don't know, music that you're listening to on a daily basis and it's not whether podcasts like this, uh, videos on YouTube from real estate people or people that you want to be like in general, like yeah. someone that has already achieved what you've done. So how submerged are you, right? In your, in, in your podcast, in your content, in your vision and stuff. And so, like I said, that's why you want to, uh, if you're watching this, like have a life-changing moment right now. Like yeah. right now, get off of this and run into a wall. Like, I hope yeah. you're motivated. I hope you're listening to this fired up and stuff. So any last points that you could give the young people out there or anyone out there that wants to do something great? Spend money on yourself to develop. I've spent so much money going on programs, training, courses, personal development courses. And like, I don't even sell a course, but like, that's what like the biggest thing that has ever helped me because you can, you know, it sounds cheesy. It's paying for speed. 